Now this lecture is part of an online course on Galois theory and it will be about examples of the Galois correspondence. So we recall what this is. So we have a Galois extension of fields, which we will take to be finite. And you remember there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between subfields of M containing L and subgroups of the Galois group of M over K. And the correspondence went as follows. For a subfield L, we associate the group of automorphisms of M that fix all elements of L, which is the Galois group of M over L. On the other hand, if we've got a subgroup of the Galois group H, the field corresponding to it is the set of elements of M fixed by H. And in the next lecture we will show that these correspondences are bijections, but in this lecture we're just going to work out several examples of them to see what's going on. Let's start off with a trivial one just to warm up. Here we're just going to take the reals contained in the complex numbers. Um, and in this case the Galois group just has two elements, which are one and um, complex conjugation. And there are two subgroups, um, and there are obviously two subfields of C containing C and R, and the subfields are the complex numbers itself and the real numbers. And these correspond to the following subgroups. The complex numbers correspond to the trivial subgroup, and the real numbers correspond to the subgroup containing one and complex conjugation. And this is rather trivial. The only thing to watch out for is that the larger field corresponds to the smaller subgroup. And as I mentioned, this is the one of the biggest source of errors in Galois theory of, of thinking the bigger field should correspond to a bigger subgroup. Um, so let's do a slightly um, more interesting example. So let's take the field Q contained in Q with the cube root of 2. Added. Well, as we saw earlier, this isn't actually a Galois extension because the other cube roots of 2 aren't in it. So we should, we should extend it a bit and take Q with a cube root of 2 and also add an omega, where, where omega is a, is, is a cube root of 1. So omega squared plus omega plus 1 equals 0. So this is now a Galois extension and its Galois group G is isomorphic to S3, which is just the group of permutations of the three cube roots of unity. So we have the cube root of 2, cube root of 2 times omega, and the cube root of 2 times omega squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out all the subfields we can think of and all the subgroups we can think of. So um, let's do the fields. So we've got the f first of all, we've got the full field up here, Q with the cube root of 2 and omega added, and down at the bottom we've got the rational numbers. And in between them, well, there's a field extension of order 2 generated by omega, and there's a field extension of order 3 generated by the cube root of 2. But then there are two other cube roots of 2 generating other fields, so, so we have two more fields here. So we've got the cube root of 2 times omega, and the cube root of 2 times omega squared. So these fields are embedded in each other like this. And we can put down the relative degrees, so the relative degrees here are 3, 3, 3, 2, 3, 2, 2, 2. Now let's write down the subgroups of the symmetric group S3, and this time we should remember to put the symmetric group S3 on the bottom, not the top, and we have a trivial subgroup there, and the symmetric group S3 has six elements, which are 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 3, 2. So it's got some elements of order 2 and some elements of order 3. And you remember from group theory the subgroups of this aren't terribly difficult to figure out. First of all, there's a subgroup of order 3, which consists of 1, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 3, 2. So that's generated by the elements of order 3. And then it's got three subgroups of order 2 generated by these elements. So we've got um, 
the subgroup generated by 2, 3, subgroup generated by 1, 2, and the subgroup generated by 1, 3. So here we've got subgroups, and we can write down the index of each subgroup in, in the other subgroups. So the indices here are 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 3, 3, and 3. And you notice this lattice of subfields looks just like this lattice of subgroups, except, of course, the inclusion gets reversed. Um, we can also do things like write down what are the, which, which subfields are, which fields are normal um, in other subfields. So, so which extensions are normal? Well, this extension is normal, and so are these two. And this extension is normal, and this extension is normal because it is degree 2. But these extensions are not normal. You remember this, <coughs> this extension was the standard example of a non-normal extension. Similarly, we can write down which subgroups are normal. Well, any subgroup of index 2 is normal, so these are normal, and that's normal, and this is normal. And these three are not normal subgroups of S3. Um, in fact, you notice that the sub Group S3 permutes these three subgroups under conjugation. So this is a conjugacy class of three subgroups. And the Galois group similarly permutes these three subfields under conjugation. And again, you can see normal subfields correspond exactly to normal subgroups. Uh, I didn't mention, by the way, that this is a normal subgroup of the full group, and this is a normal extension of Q, but I don't have room to draw in absolutely everything. Um, so, so this is an example of the Galois correspondence. If, if you've got a Galois extension, then the lattice of subfields looks just like the lattice of subgroups, up to duality or something. Um, so now let's look at the example of the field of order 2 contained in well, it's either the field of order 4, or it's order 16, or a field of order 16, depending on whatever. Um, and the, the, the first thing we want to do is to work out what is the Galois group. So can we find any automorphisms of the field of order 16? Well, there's one obvious automorphism, which just takes a to a squared. You, you remember that... Um, um, the map taping a to a to the p in characteristic p is a homomorphism because a plus b to the p is equal to a to the p plus b to the p, and a b to the p is equal to a to the p, b to the p. So this is the famous Frobenius endomorphism, and it acts on here. And we can ask what its order is. Um, well, you notice that phi squared takes a to a to the 4, and phi cubed takes a to a to the 8, and phi to the 4 maps a to a to the 16, which is equal to a. So we see that phi to the 4 is equal to 1. So we have a six, so phi generates a cyclic group of order 4. On the other hand, we know that the order of the Galois group has to be the degree of this extension. The degree of f16 over f2 is just 4. So, so we found the full Galois group. Um, the Galois group is just generated by phi and is um, order 4. And you notice there's nothing special about the field of order 16. We find that similarly, if you take fp contained in fp to the n, the Galois group is cyclic, generated by um, a goes to a to the p. Um, incidentally, this is one of the reasons why finite fields are really easy to deal with. It's because not only are, are all extensions of finite fields Galois extensions, but their Galois groups are cyclic, and cyclic groups are, of course, particularly easy to deal with. So, so finite fields are easy because cyclic groups are easy. Anyway, um, let's figure out, let's draw a picture of the subfields and the corresponding subgroups. Um, so, um, 
subfields aren't very difficult to figure out. There's only one sub field other than the obvious maximal and minimal ones which look like this. And um, the, 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 the full Galois group contains one phi, phi squared and phi cubed. Um, and the trivial subgroup corresponds to the full field. And this is one subgroup of order two, which is just the elements one and phi squared. And here all extensions are normal and all subgroups are normal. So there's nothing um, terribly exciting to say about this. Um, by the way, um, in, in here, that the, the chain of subgroups and the chain of subfields is linear. Um, of course, that's not always true. For instance, if we took the, the um, Galois field of order 2 to the 6, for example, then we would have a Galois field of order 2 cubed and a Galois field of order 2 squared, and these would contain the Galois field of order 2. And similarly, we would have a cyclic group of order 6, and... Um, um, here we would have a group of order 1, and um, here we would have a group of order, su subgroup of order 3, and here a subgroup of order 2. Um, to, my notation isn't very good, but anyway. So, um, so the subfield lattice of a finite field isn't always linear, but it's always very easy to work out. Um, So the next example, I'm going to look at the field over the rationals generated by a seventh root of unity. So zeta to the seven is equal to one, and zeta is equal to e to the two pi i over seven, or some power of it. Well, of course, the polynomial x to the seven minus one is not irreducible. It's equal to x minus one times x to the six plus x to the five plus x to the four plus x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1. And you remember there's a sort of trick of showing this is irreducible using Eisenstein's criterion if you change x to x plus 1, which I won't bother repeating. So this is an irreducible polynomial. Um, and now if zeta is one root of this, the other roots Well, if zeta is a seventh root of unity, so is zeta squared, zeta cubed, zeta to the four, zeta to the five, and zeta to the six. So in particular, this extension is separable because it's characteristic zero, and it's normal because it's a splitting field of a polynomial, so um, it's a Galois extension. Um, and there's nothing special about seventh roots of unity here. We could do something fairly similar for uh, at least any other root of unity of prime order. For composite order, we need to be a little bit more careful. So what's its Galois group? Well, any automorphism must take zeta to one of the other roots. So it must take zeta to zeta to the i for i equals 1, 2, up to 6. And what's the group operation? Well, if we take zeta to the i and then apply the automorphism raising things to the jth power, this is just zeta to the i j. So you see from this that the Galois group is just the non-zero elements of the um, integers, sorry, the integers mod 7 under the operation of multiplication, because here the composition of these automorphisms just corresponds to multiplication. So the Galois group has six elements, which can be denoted by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and the group operation is multiplication mod 7. And we remember that this is cyclic of order 6, and, and of course 1 is not a generator of this group, it's, it's the identity element. So, so a generator might be 3, because if you look at the powers of 3, we have 3 to the naught equals 1, 3 to the 1 equals 3, 3 squared equals 2, 3 cubed equals 6, 3 to the 4 equals 4, and 3 to the 5 is 
um, um, five. Um, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Um, so it's a cyclic group of order six, and a cyclic group of order six has um, just four subgroups. So let's write out the subgroups and the subfields. So the, the subgroups look like this. There's a subgroup one, and there's a subgroup one, two, three, four, five, six, the whole group. And then there's a subgroup of order, um, the, 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 there's a subgroup of order two, which is generated by um, the um, cube of the generator. And there's also a subgroup of order three, um, um, generated by, um, what, consisting of the elements one, two, and four. So it looks like this, and we can write down the indexes of all these groups. So that is index two, that is index three, that is index three, and that is index two. And these correspond to fields. So let's write down the fields. Well, first of all, up here we have the fields Q of zeta, and down here we have the field Q, of course. And here we have a field um, generated by the elements one and six. Well, what, what, what does the element six correspond to? Well, this takes zeta to zeta to the minus one, which is the complex conjugate of zeta. So this element here is really just complex conjugation. So we're looking at the elements of this field that are fixed under complex conjugation, in other words, the real elements. And, and it's sort of pretty obvious what that's going to be. Um, it's going to be the um, element q zeta plus zeta to the minus one, and you remember this is two cosine two pi over seven. And we studied this field quite a bit in several examples earlier, except we used the element cosine of two pi over seven instead of two cosine two pi over seven. Well, that doesn't really make any difference. So anyway, the, the indices of these fields are like this. And then We've got one other field, so we've got a sort of mystery field here, and if you haven't seen this example before, it's probably not at all obvious what this field is. So what the Galois theory is telling us is that there's a subfield of this which is a degree two extension of the rationals. Well, what on earth is it? Well, how do we find it? Well, it consists of the elements that are fixed under this group here. So how can we find an element of this field? Well, let's take an element zeta, and we're going to have zeta plus zeta squared plus zeta to the four. And you notice this is um, obtained by, you start with zeta, and then you act on zeta by all three elements of this group and add them up. And that's obviously going to be invariant under this group. So this is a good candidate for a generator of this field. Okay, so, this should be Q of alpha. But what is alpha? I mean, we know that any quadratic extension of Q should be generated by the square root of something. So what's the something that this is generated by a square root of? Well, let, let, let's play around with alpha a bit. So you can find that alpha squared is equal to zeta squared plus zeta to the four plus zeta to the eight, which is just zeta plus two zeta cubed, plus two zeta to the six, plus two um, zeta to the five. Um, and then you notice that here we've got zeta squared plus zeta to the four plus zeta, which is just alpha again. And here we've got two times the things that aren't in alpha. And if you sort of fiddle around with it a bit, you notice that alpha squared plus alpha is now going to be two times every power of zeta except for zeta to the naught. So if we now add on a two, we get this is two zeta to the naught plus zeta to the one plus zeta squared plus all the way up plus zeta to the six. And now the sum of all these powers of zeta is just zero, so this is just zero. So now we find out what alpha is. It's a root of this equation here. So alpha, well we can solve this using the formula for quadratics, it's just minus one plus minus the square root of one minus eight, which is minus seven over two. So we can now see what this field is. 
it's q of root minus 7. Um, and again, it's as index 2 over q and index 3 in this field here. So, so just as before, we can see the subgroup, the lattice of subfields is just like the lattice of subgroups. And um, of course, all groups here are abelian, so um, everything is normal. There's no need to mark the normal ones. Um, so, um, what we're going to do next lecture is actually prove the fundamental theorem of Galois theory, showing that we always get such a correspondence between lattices and, sorry, between subfields and subgroups, and then we'll give a few more examples.